Yo, what is going on you guys? Bastion YJ here and today I'm going to be coming at you with another Before You Buy video. In this video, we're going to be doing Dinorphia, Dinomorphia. I think it's going to be Dinorphia. I'm still not too, too sure, but, <laughs> but it's going to be coming out of the brand new set Battle of Chaos. So in the Before You Buy video, essentially what we do is look at three pros and three cons in each and every single new archetype coming out in TCG set. This episode of the Before You Buy series, we're going to be looking at the Dinorphia archetype. Now Dinorphia, like I said before, is going to be coming out of Battle of Chaos and it seems to be a trap heavy fusion deck that I think is really really cool now and one of our rules to the before you buy strategy is that we look at the pure variant exclusively so we're not going to be pairing this up with the adventurer Shadal we're not going to be pairing this up with invoke it's just going to be the pure variant as is as I believe Konami should intend it to play and then we can take a look at maybe some variations as to what might be good from this moving forward but without further ado let's go ahead and get right into the pros so overall this deck I think is really really cool I think it has a lot of amazing interactions I think it's a lot of fun it's really not a big brain type of deck it's really just a deck we're gonna be setting a lot of cards realistically so it's a very easy deck to go ahead and pick up if you're gonna be a first time player do you want to go ahead and get that out the way and the first pro I want to say is that you fusion summon pretty much at will during your opponent's turn and it's absolutely ridiculous so Dinorphias the big thing they have going for them is that they fusion summon from their hand deck field even from their extra deck using materials from their extra deck using these trap cards like Dinorphia Frenzy like uh, Dinorphia Domain uh, things like that Brutes gives you interruption as well you can play cards like Torrential Tribute, Imperms, the Solemn Package uh, Dinorphia Alert, which actually goes ahead and let you special summon uh, your Dinorphia monsters from your graveyard as well, just spamming a whole bunch of monsters during your opponent's turn. When during your turn, you're really not going to be doing all that much. So that's why I think, first of all, this deck is going to be just a lot of interruptions during your opponent's turn while you're just fusion summoning at will, essentially. So that's something that I really, really like about the deck is that you're playing a lot of your opponent's turn. So a lot of hand traps, especially like uh, like Effect Failure, says you can only, uh, during your opponent's main phase, it's really not going to do anything to you. So cards that can really only activate during your opponent's turn are really not going to be beneficial at all for your opponents. So that's why I think is a really, really big pro for the Door Knife for your strategy. Pro number two is actually going to be that this deck, as I mentioned before, can fusion summon using your extra deck materials with this card right here Dinorphia Frenzy this is the card that you're really gonna be want to be searching out the very most you can summon out your Dino Dinorphia uh, Rextum so with Rextrum or Rexterm, however you want to say it. This card is absolutely nuts. So essentially, uh, your opponent cannot activate monster effects of monsters they control with attack greater than or equal to your life point. Now, why is that relevant? All of these cards, in order to fusion summon, you have to pay half your life points. And that might be a huge, huge cost, but you see how this works. So the Norfia Rexstrom, what it allows you to do is a quick effect. You can pay half your life points and have the attack of all monsters your opponent controls will be equal to your life points, which means essentially you're turning off all your opponent's monster effects for that turn just by having this 3k beat stick on the board, which is very easily summonable through the Dinorphia Frenzy. So that's something that I think is absolutely just amazing out of this rule, especially with that card. And that's gonna, probably going to be the main card you're going to be searching out with a card like Pop. Uh, prosperity of part or part of duality and that's also another thing this deck can easily play part of duality no problem because you're rarely going to be special summoning during your own turn primarily you're just going to be doing again during your opponent's turn another thing i really like about this deck which is pro number three guys is that it is incredibly consistent incredibly consistent so essentially dinorphia you only play six monsters because it's really all you need because this deck is made to win turn one or two maybe turn three at the most any grind game it has to that it really really starts to falter after that but we'll get to that when we get to the cons but as far as consistency is absolutely outrageous so you if you draw uh the dinorphia this theresia so essentially when this card normal special summon you can set a dinorphia trap directly from your deck to your spell trap card zone so that's already outrageous you can go ahead and just set this directly and then you're already good to go 
Or if you have your deep lows, you when this card is normal special summon, you can send an Orphia card from your deck to the graveyard, and they do prevent uh, effect damage a lot of these cards when they're sent to the graveyard. I believe only this is the only one, the Dinorphia Sonic, that prevents battle damage when you banish it from your graveyard, which again gives you an extra form of protection, but you're not really going to be playing it for that. It's really just to go ahead and have and keep consistently going through your deck. 3 Fossil Dick to go ahead and search out your Dinorphia Thursia, Partheriza, 3 Pop Prosperity, 3 Duality. Even if you draw a handful of just trap cards, it's still great because essentially you're going to be drawing ju Solemn Judgment, which essentially is going to do two things for you. It's going to not only decrease your life points, which essentially you benefit from having low life points in this deck. I've played this deck religiously essentially for a week, and essentially I've had games where I'm at 12 life points. 12 life points! <laughs> And it's crazy, 12 or 13, you know? And and you're still in a very advantageous position just because your opponent can't activate effects. The only card that would falter from this is Solemn Strike eventually. But if you open your opening hand, that's basically good. That's what I'm saying. This deck is very is made to win turn one, two, and three. After that, you're really, really risking it all as far as that goes. But essentially, drawing a, a handful of traps, let's say you draw Trap Trick, Judgment, Strike, Torrential. Uh, and not even one of the fusion ones, a brute, right? So the brute, uh, you can destroy monster you control and a card your opponent controls, which is again better interruption. But even with that, you still have the trap tricks. You can send your frenzy. You still have solemn judgment and strikes to go ahead and interrupt your opponent. So it, this deck, no matter what hand you draw, you're gonna have interruptions and you're gonna have a way to potentially fusion summon a big freaking monster. So I just think that's really really cool. You don't need to worry about having your uh, your materials in your hand. You don't need to worry about actually having them in play because there's like fusion summons from everywhere. I think it's really, really cool. And those are the three amazing, amazing pros. I really, really like this deck. You cannot sleep on it. Now on to the cons. Again, I am trying not to be biased. I do really, really like this deck. But of course, with every great deck comes some great cons as well. The main one with this one, as I just mentioned before, is that you use a lot of life points to go ahead and just make your board. Again, making a very glass candy deck. If your opponent were to have sets d dimension barrier and cause fusion, and then you're just that, that's that's pretty much game over for you at that point, you know. So that is one thing that I will say that does uh, hurt to say quite a bit is that essentially you do feel very powerful and you still feel in control whenever even if you have a low life point count because the fusion monsters and the trap cards are so oppressive. However, having said that, you are putting yourself in a position where like myself, I've had 12 life points. Uh, 50 life points things like that and I'm still trying to grind out the good thing is that they only take half your life points so You can still go ahead and fusion summon things like that They don't have a restrictive 1000 life point 1500 life point cost But it does put you in an extremely extremely vulnerable position to where if they have anything that can attack directly Say if you're going against sky striker uh, Or something like that or like uh, with zodiac with borbo and attack directly those could very very easily kill you even if it's only a 100 attack monster it could definitely go ahead and just end your match right then and there con number two if this deck does become meta i can see its power being immediately nullified via cards like royal decree via cards like denko seka via cards like essentially anything that prevents you from fusion summoning anything that stops trap cards it has those two main things it does rely on where it really just lacks that type of versatility and playing other cards now again i'm strictly talking about the pure variant of dinorphia if another variant comes out which i'm assuming is going to get mixed in with uh with shadal invoked somehow i i can already see it any fusion uh, deck that doesn't really need a normal summon uh, mix it with Alistair and you're good to go essentially so it might get mixed in there but again we're just looking at the pure variant i just don't think that this has the resource or the side deck capable enough to be able to combat those type of things, especially with a card like Imperial Order, who is that is now banned. This deck would take full advantage of Imperial Order. However, it's banned. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Don't get me wrong, but it is a card that would have held this deck quite a bit, maintain meta viability. And the con number three, guys, is that unfortunately this deck does have a huge weakness as well when it comes to spell and trap card uh, interruption. Now it can turn off monster effects like this. It's super, super quick, easy, uh, effortless. Essentially, just turns off all monster effects. However, when it comes 
comes to playing against a card like Regeki, Dark Hole, Lightning Storm, shoot, Mirror Force, <laughs> Torrential Tribute, going up against uh, Spell and Trap Board Wipes or Spell and Trap Negates, this deck does have a weakness, it doesn't have, doesn't have an immediate response to those things, but that's why you play cards like Solemn Strike, however it is a 3 of, again you're playing Pop Prosperity and Duality, so there is a way to go ahead and dig for it, search for it, but that's, that's going to be a really big weakness for the deck, is that it doesn't really have immediate Spell Trap Negations, don't get me wrong, it'll, just, it'll shut off all your monsters, but when it comes to that, it really just makes it a little bit tough for to go ahead and figure out exactly what the ceiling of this deck is and what the what the floor is as well just because it can be incredible in burst i think in a master duel type setting where you only have one essentially one duel and not a full match i think this deck would be fantastic i think this is probably want to be one of the better decks in master duel when it does come out however in the tcg i do not see this deck being as top tier as i see it when it, either in testing or in master duel things it might be just because it is going to be very susceptible to things like side deck cards things like that so that's going to be it for my before you buy video again let me know what you guys think about the dinorphia deck in the comment section down below personally I'm a big fan of this deck. It doesn't look like it's going to be too, too expensive either. So I might go ahead and pick it up uh, and testing out with, again, a more Shadal Invoked or maybe just an Invoked Dogmatica package. We'll see how that works out. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you guys did enjoy. And if you guys did enjoy, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I have plenty more deck profiles before you buys, pack openings, all those type of things coming up available on the channel. So subscribe for more videos, guys. Now go ahead and see y'all in the next one.